This could be a good one. What we've got here is a 2011 Nissan Frontier. Came from a salvage auction. I'm assuming somewhere in Hazard County. She's been through the ringer. Pretty sure it's been rolled and they took it off some sweet jumps. Apparently it has a clear title, but uh, I'm not sure it deserves one. Anyway, he's got a list of stuff he wants us to look at, so let's uh, let's put it up on the rack and yeah, see what kind of surprises this old girl has in store for us. Don't know what was there. It runs and drives. Seems to run pretty good. Check engine lights on. So it's got a bunch of codes. Comes with some spare parts. I don't think that's for cutting pickles. What is your assessment of this fine automobile? It looks tilted. Yeah, I think he said the frame might be bent. It may, might be. Might be bent. There's a solid chance that the frame is bent. Either the spring's broken or the frame's bent. Yeah, it's probably not good. Good luck. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> Max, what's the rodent report? Infested? Or are you giving it a pass? Nope, we gotta do a walk around. Well, he's not too interested. Alright, we gotta work. Okay, bye. Well, I'd say they definitely gave it the full whistling diesel treatment. I think the frame is twisted from kind of from the front spring mounts back down in this corner. He wants to remove the hitch. I think we'll leave it for right now. I'm going to run it up to the body shop, have them take a look at it. They should be able to straighten that frame. And sometimes they like to use the hitches as a place to hang on to. Said the differentials leaking. That's pretty minor. Just needs a cover resealed. Said something about the left rear wheel speed sensor. That wire is tight as a banjo string. Springs are okay, I think. Drive line looks good. It's had some exhaust work done. I wonder if these had four catalytic converters originally and somebody helped themselves to the rear ones it still has the front ones uh, he said that the four-wheel drive does not work he would like to know why looks like that o2 sensor is loose and not plugged in there's a pigtail he told me he tried to get it aligned and this right front steering knuckle is bent. It was bent so far that they couldn't get the camber, the camber to come in. I don't even know if they even tried. So it needs a knuckle. Probably we'll just go ahead and get the, the upper and lower control arms too. Because we don't know. We don't know what's going on there. Sway bar link's broken. That's no big deal. Obviously we're missing the front bumper. Otherwise, I mean, it's not really that bad. Rust wise, it's, it's pretty decent. The frame is solid. Let's uh, hook the scan tool up and see what surprises we find there. She's just chock full of codes. I made a list here of a few we can focus on. Sometimes that's the hardest part is just knowing what's important and what's not. 
There's three for the engine. Uh, bank one, air fuel ratio sensor, stuck, rich, or lean. Heated O2 sensor, bank two, that one's unplugged. And then the knock sensor, high voltage. In the ABS module, it's not happy at all about the steering angle sensor. And then the left rear wheel speed sensor. The transfer case is also unhappy about that speed sensor. In the passenger seat, there was an envelope. Inside we find a wheel speed sensor. I'm assuming that is an air fuel ratio sensor. And that looks like a knock sensor. So we've got some parts to play with. Let's uh, take a look at that wheel speed sensor. See if we can make heads or tails of that. I'll flip that uh, high. The little picture here is just flashing at us. I believe that indicates that there's some kind of error that it can't get past. Uh, it's probably not going to shift though because it says vehicle speed sensor rear 78.92 miles per hour. So I think that would probably do it. Yes sir, we do indeed have a new wheel speed sensor on the left rear. That explains why that cable's so tight. They just got the grommets in the wrong spot when they made it. Anyway, I think I see the problem. Just got lucky here with a visual inspection. Let me zoom you guys in. Right there on the plug, those wires are chafed. I don't know if a little cheese eating friend has been after those or, or what the deal is, but I bet those wires are rubbing together. This is quite a lash up here, but long story short, the sensor should be connected back to the harness. That one wire was actually broken at the connector. However, the computer is still not happy with it. It's still giving me an open circuit code for that sensor. No, the sensor is good. I checked the resistance. Anyway, I followed the harness. It goes up across this cross member splits off to the right side and then the main cable actually comes down here on the outside of the frame on the passenger side i am not too impressed with this why would they run it outside the frame you see somebody's put running boards on it so they cut the original clips yeah, it's all split open down here and there's a big bolt connector i mean it's right behind the wheel i'll bet we've got a broken wire in that harness somewhere it's already split open i guess we just kind of poke and peel good news about the wheel speed sensors is they're a twisted pair so there's there's one and there's the other Looks pretty good, really. That doesn't look too hot. I know that doesn't look too good right there. Anyway, let me poke and pull and prod. Maybe we'll find something here and get lucky. I think we might have a winner. Yeehaw, there's a blue wire. And now we got some crustiness on that white one there too. Okay. I 
fix the blue wire and the white wire. I don't see anything else in here that's green and crusty. There we go. So technically, this thing should go into four wheel drive. Look at that. Four WD. Yes, sir. Well, I've got a new pigtail here. Looks close enough to me. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking we should put the old wheel speed sensor back in. This one's just too, a little too short. Oh, never mind. Turns out these rubber boots actually slide pretty easily. So, it should be all set. Ah, uh, is it backwards? Well, folks, we got bit by the old 50-50-90 rule. The pigtails I bought came as a set, and I didn't even look at the shape, I just looked at the color, and I installed the gray one over here where the uh, original gray plug was. Turns out we needed the brown one. So now that that's installed, let's see if we can get it hooked up. There it is. And that should clip in there, like so. Yeah, that'll work. Does our four wheel drive work? Yes, it does. Fantastic. All right, let's move on to the O2 sensors. So we have a code P2A00, which is for the bank one, sensor one, stuck lean. That would be this guy here, but it appears to be working. So it responds to a rich or lean condition. Nothing wrong there. Ah, oh, come on. But, Bank 1 sensor 2, the downstream O2 sensor, it is dead. Completely dead. Now we expect Bank 2 sensor 2 to be dead because it's not there, it's unplugged. It's actually out of the... I actually removed it, that's why it's so loud. But yeah, Bank 1 appears to be dead as well. So I think that's kind of a thing with these Nissans. I've seen it on other vehicles too, where it will give you a code for the air fuel ratio sensor stuck lean, but it's actually the downstream O2 sensor that's the problem. All right, we're gonna check power and ground. Down here at bank one, sensor two. 
Can you guys see that? Power is good. Ground is good. That should be the heater ground. And it is not good. But it may have to be running for that to work. O2 sensor circuit tests are good. It's kind of hard to show you guys. All I was doing was connecting my test light to pin three and four. That's power and ground. If the light lights up, that means both power and ground are good. Then I connect pin three to pin two. That connects power to the signal. And I can watch my scan tool, the live data voltage should go high. The maximum is 2.5, but 12 volts isn't going to hurt it. Then I connect pin four to pin two that connects ground to signal and my live data should go to zero. That was good for both bank one and bank two. The only thing I can't test is the heater circuit because they're both off and I don't have a bi-directional control for it. At least I can't find one. So we're going to roll the dice and Make the call. It needs both downstream O2 sensors. I tumbled down a pretty deep rabbit hole trying to fix this knock sensor code. Sorry, I didn't record it. It's just been absolute chaos here today. Anyway, it turns out it's not a rabbit hole, but there's definitely a rodent involved. I'm saying a rat, maybe or a very industrious mouse. He set up shop here in the valley and he decided to make a snack out of the connector for the bank one knock sensor. Chomped right through it. The sensor is good. At least it tests good. Bank two looks good. So we've got to fix the, uh, the wiring, clean up the mess and then put this back together. I uh, made a lot more work for myself. I broke off one of the bolts, couldn't get it out, finally had to drill it out. That didn't work out very well, then I had to drill it out and put a helicoil in it. The good news is it's calmed down a little bit, so I'll bring you guys along for the, uh, the conclusion of this adventure. I've never seen loom wrap this crappy. Jeepers. That was a struggle. Okay. Let's slam this thing back together. Got new gaskets installed. Now the fun part.
Now you're supposed to remove the fuel rails to tighten up these intake bolts, but the injectors are, they're pretty well stuck in there. So rather than break an injector or cause a bunch of problems, I chose to just work around it. Of course, I still broke one of the bolts, but I think that was gonna happen no matter what. And I tried to find the torque spec for these intake manifold bolts. I couldn't find anything in service data. So we're gonna take our best guess. We got some new O2 sensors. Got a Bosch unit for the left side. And then this guy here was in the big envelope of parts. And I'm pretty sure that is the downstream O2 for the right side. So yeah, he's got it. We're gonna go ahead and put it in. A little bit floppy here on the lead and might tie that up, but otherwise I think it's fine. All right, left side sensor looks good. It's even got the clip up here to keep it off the drive shaft. All right, I got permission to remove this right side running board. The left side's already gone. So let's get it off here. Then we can tie up that wiring. What I really wish is I could say that this was the first time. Well, when I took the fill plug out, 
I got a little puff of air. Yeah, sure enough. That vent was blocked. There we go. That's not a good situation. You get pressure build up in the axle because the the oil gets hot when you're driving. And if the pressure builds up too much, it'll blow your seals out. I think we are done on the bottom side of this rig. The trailer hitch is gone. The rear axle has been resealed and refilled. Got the wheel speed sensor harness fixed. We have two new downstream oxygen sensors. And the right side running board has been removed. And I tied that harness back up the best I could. It's not pretty, but it's a whole lot better than it was. Hi, Max. What are you doing, pup? The big unresolved issue is the camber in the front end. So here on the left side, it's cambered out at the top. See the gap at the bottom of my level? That's how it should be. Over here on the right side, it's actually opposite. See the gap at the top? So it's cambered in at the top, negative camber. And he was told that the, the knuckle was bent here. I don't think that's the case. At least that's not all of it. I actually think that the frame is bent and the upper control arm mounts are pushed in towards the engine. You can kind of see it here. On my level, there's a pretty good gap at the top there. It should be pretty much straight up and down. Anyway, I talked to the body shop here in town. They're pretty confident they can straighten the frame and straighten that suspension mount, you know, put it on a frame rack and pull it. So we're going to let them deal with it. You know, they have ways to measure it and obviously ways to, to push and pull it and, and get it where it needs to be. All right, let's try that again. I forgot to hook up the hose that runs from the manifold to the brake booster. So I had a massive vacuum leak. Surprise, it ran as good as it did. Man, the bank two cat seems to work fine, but the bank one might not be so strong. Anyway, let's go for a lull. Enjoy riding this thing. Try to be a little easier on it than the last guy. Actually drives pretty decent. speed sensors all seem to be working but I'm getting some weird it feels like ABS activation I'm not sure
All right, folks, I think we've done about as well as we could hope to do. It did run one of the monitors on both downstream O2 sensors, it hasn't run the other one. And I don't think it set any codes. I spoke too soon. Well, crap. Stand by. Max, what are you doing, bub? All right, folks. I think. Oh, boy. You just got too big of an exhaust leak there at the, uh, the donut behind the converter on both sides. So we're going to have to fix that. Yeah, I think that's the deal. So now that it's warmed up, those gaps in the flanges have opened up. And it's basically just showing zero, which means it's super lean. Okay, well, yeah. We're making progress. Now we didn't, you know, we didn't replace any parts that weren't bad. I know that O2 sensor wasn't working and the other one was missing, but we've got some more work to do. So yeah, uh, the steering angle sensor issue seems to have resolved itself since we got that wheel speed sensor working. So two things outstanding. It's got some ABS activation when you don't want it. Not sure what's causing that. And we still have some O2 sensor problems, which I believe is due to leaks in the exhaust. Yeah, I hate to make a part two, but I think we're gonna have to. Right, lady? Yep. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching.